Implementing custom validation rules gives you the opportunity to programmatically set the validation state of a particular input element. This example is much like the one you just saw, except I have a custom validation rule that I've added into the mix. First, I'll type in the username. And now I need to add in an email address. Now, in poking a little bit of fun at my wife, I'm adding in an AOL email address. But you'll see here that please enter a non AOL email address is one of the validation rules. So if I come in here and fix that up, now it passes all the validation rules. So obviously, excluding out AOL email addresses is probably not one of the validation rules that you want to implement, but I did want to make the point that it could be anything that you want. Now, the code for this sample is largely the same as the last one that you saw. I'll begin by creating an array for all the rule names. Then I'm reaching into the DOM and finding each one of the elements that has the data dash rule attribute applied to it and adding that name into the array. Now, when we take a look at the validate function, it's largely the same as what you saw in the first sample. The main difference is that now I'm calling a function called validate against custom rules. So the first order of operation is to hide all the validation messages because I want to make sure I'm starting off with a clean slate. So I'll initially hide all of the validation messages and then only turn on the ones that I need to show. Then comes the call to validate against custom rules. Once that's done, then this function will check validity on the form itself. The validation fail function and check rule functions are exactly the same from the last sample. So very quickly, if validation fails, It'll check the validation state to see which one of the rule names represents the broken validation rule. Check rule will go through and show or remove the hide class from that rule element so it will display the error message telling the user what they need to do in order to fix the data that they've input. So here's the function for validate is AOL. I'm going to skip past it for a moment and show you that here's the function for validate against custom rules. I did it this way so that if you had other rules that you wanted to add in here, you could do this very easily. Plus, by naming the function validate is AOL, you have a very good idea just by looking at the function name of what its validation rule is. So you could add to the list of custom validation rules very easily. Let's go ahead and take a look at validate is AOL. The implementation is fairly basic. The first operation is to get reference to the input element that represents the email. If there's a value within that box, then I'm evaluating that value to look and see if it contains a string at AOL.com. If it does, then on the element itself, I'm calling set custom validity by passing in the string of invalid. This invalidates it on the form, and so now the CSS pseudo classes of invalid will be applied to this element. And at this point, I'm showing the broken validation rule message by finding the span that has that message and removing the hide class from it. However, if it does not have the string of at AOL.com, then I'm setting custom validity to an empty string. Now, previously, browsers allowed you to pass in an empty argument list into set custom validity, but now you have to pass in an empty string in order to clear out the custom validity for an element. So the key takeaways to this sample are to invalidate an item, you call element.setCustomValidity and pass in the invalid string. And if you want to clear the validation state, you call element set custom validity passing in an empty string. And the rest of this code just hooks up each one of the functions to the different events. So for every input element that's not a button, on invalidate calls validation fail, and on blur calls validate. And then finally, for this validation button to check validation, the click event handler is calling the validate function.